Uh, personally, I love uh, Christmas albums. I love holiday albums. I love holiday specials. So I'm so excited to talk about it. Quest, do you have a favorite uh, Christmas album, holiday album? Jackson 5 Christmas album? Yeah, yeah that was a good Jackson 5. I think I'm going to say Phil Spector. I want to say Phil Spector's uh, Christmas uh, present. Christmas present for you or something is called, right? Yeah. Or yeah. Or Christmas gift for you. That's my, that's my jam. But now, I have a new favorite now. I mean, come on. This is oh, what I'm yeah. talking about now. How did... Uh, how did this come about? How did you go, oh, yeah, I should do that? I've wanted to do it. For, I'm like you. I'm like, I start early. Like, I've already been start. I, well, this year, I'm Christmas all year. But yeah. I, and I, I'm not even tired at all. Like, and New it. York makes it so incredible. It is. Are I you mean, feeling you the spirit? You guys big here. I right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Trees outside. It's so good. Yeah. But I just, I've always wanted, I think every writer um, would fantasize about writing a Christmas hit because it's kind of that thing that comes back. And I think also, like, when you write songs and you're part of people's journey, like through your music that you write, to write and be part of their holiday and their memories for that part, I mean, musically would be like my dream. So, Forever, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I it, even so... when I die, hopefully, I would be <laughs> no, great. When, please, let's not talk about that. No, I'm just saying. It's not like, a dark it, album at all. It's a very positive <laughs> album. You cut those tracks off. No, please. But the, the first track you wrote was Christmas Eve. Uh, well, that yeah, it was one of the one of the first ones I wrote. How'd you get inspired by that? Would... That was an amazing. That's actually a Christmas miracle song because I was um, actually at Blake's ranch. He has a ranch in Oklahoma, and it's this like it's this fenced-in high fence with like all kinds of exotic animals. Like I mean, herds, like acres. And I, <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm gonna go for a run. I'm not only gonna do my my exercise, but I'm gonna do my spiritual exercise. I'm gonna jog and I'm gonna pray, right? So that was like my, my goal. And I started thinking about if I wrote a Christmas song, like what, what could it be? Like what would it be? And, and then just like nerd, like a nerd as the wildebeests were passing by, I was like. Wildebeest? Yeah, he has wildebeest. Oh, that's <laughs> <And> so <laughs> rad. I, I gotta get a wildebeest, yeah. Oh, you, I'm writing this down for my Christmas list. Come, yeah, you like, can come to <laughs> one of my wife will get me a wildebeest. That'd be so rad. <laughs> But I was running and I, I just was like, I was like, ooh, maybe I'll just try singing something. Maybe something will come. And the whole chorus to this song, Christmas Eve, came and it was like a prayer. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I think I, ha I have to run back. And I was like running back and my parents were there and I'm like, did I steal this? Like, is this from church? Because I feel like I know this is, song. Isn't that funny? Because yeah. when you hear a song for the first time, you're like, wait, this song's out already. You're like, no, it's a brand new song, but I it's so good. I was convinced that I stole it. And then um, went back and I ended up finishing it. And what's crazy is that Blake heard it and he loved it so much that he decided decided to put it on his Christmas record and record it, which nobody's ever recorded any of my songs, and especially not like the hottest cowboy like ever, Sixties Man Alive. Like. I mean, can we talk about this cowboy? Oh, yeah. Can we just talk about this? Look at this guy. Blake, how, I, I don't, I, Honestly, I, how is he handling this? Because if I know Blake a little bit, <laughs> this is not his thing at all. That is not his thing this at all. This is so not his thing. I feel, I feel responsible a little bit because he <laughs> called me. He's like, I got to talk to you about something. They want me to do this, and I hate doing photo shoots. I'm not going to. I was like, <laughs> I was like, why would you not do it? Your record just came out. Like, you're going to look back, and you're going to regret it. Like, come on. Just live in the moment. Like, yeah. everybody wants to see you do a photo. I want to see you do a photo shoot, and then kind of convinced him, and he's just sort of like, it's. But he's like, he's, I don't want to be sexist just, man alive. I don't want to do <laughs> I don't want to do that. He just would never, ever. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to rub it in. I know, I know. Because I know that he would make him laugh. <laughs> uh, you actually sing a great uh, duet on this uh, album. This is the You Make It Feel Like Christmas, the title. I know. And I, I, he is such an incredible songwriter. I mean, he doesn't do it that often. Like, he just, he just, I don't know. He loves to just be on his ranch. That's his favorite thing to do. So. Yeah. Anyways, he was sitting around when we talked about the style the record was going to be, that whole kind of Phil Spector throwback. Because I was trying to figure it out. Like, was it going to be ska, punk? Was it going to be reggae? Was it going to be, you know what I mean? There's so many different things I've done. So anyways, we decided to go old school because I feel like that's sort of raw and punk and like live musicians and yeah. classic at the same time. It sort of sounds like there, a no doubt record sections. in a way. It's, yeah. uh, it's fantastic. I told you when I was back, so I was like, I could already hear it like in department stores like, every year because uh, in, the, in the great way because I was like, it makes you so happy and puts you in the holiday spirit. I also love the inside photo. Look at how gorgeous. Oh, that's my little boo-boo. Is that your little boo-boo boo there? Oh, come on. How cute. cute. It's just awesome. I'm, uh, I'm just so... Uh, have you thought of what you're going to get Blake for Christmas? I, I have. He's really hard to buy for because he has a, already has the wildebeest, so I was going to get him that. Yeah. And then, um... What do you get of a man who has wildebeest? <laughs> yeah. But 
I, I think that because he doesn't fit in any of my furniture at my house, he's too big. Like, he literally... He's a big dude. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get you a couch, and, like, that's going to be your Christmas present. And, you going to get him a couch? I'm, yeah, I'm putting it outside, so then he can do, like, the... He likes to put fires and things like that. In L.A., it's kind of... I don't know. He has to... I try to make him feel comfortable in so, L.A. And look at this. I just turned the thing. Here's him <laughs> on a chair outside, like an indoor... No. <laughs> With a beer, that's a, that's not yeah. an outdoor furniture. Yeah, we're not gonna do Lazy Boy. You're at not my doing house. Lazy Boy. No. House, no. He's gonna keep that one in Oklahoma. He can <laughs> <laughs> that's for Blake. Blake, you're getting a cash, man. Oh, well, hopefully he's not watching. He All right, knows. Don't I already told him because he, he has knows. everything. Yeah. Uh huh. On and on and on. Uh, I said. And it's on and on and on.